Medical imaging, especially CT imaging, there's a couple parameters that are really important when we're looking at the display of our images. Those parameters are the window width and the window level. So the window is actually how we see into our images. And so with that analogy, you can think about the windowing parameters in our image actually display the contrast range that we're going to be seeing in our images. So in medical imaging, there's a limit on the contrast from the system, and then the window width and window level parameters also affect how well you can differentiate different objects which have different contrast. This is separate from the resolution. So the high contrast spatial resolution, that's determined by your system and also the matrix on the system or how small your image pixels are. So those two things are separate. And today we're talking about essentially the contrast resolution or your ability to visualize objects which are close in contrast. Our video on house speed units, if you haven't seen that one already, house speed units typically go from minus a thousand to over a thousand in the human body. So if you were to display an image over that whole range, you would not get very good contrast resolution. The ability to see soft tissue structures would be limited. You would be able to differentiate things like bone and air in the lungs, things that are very different in contrast, but for soft tissue structures, you're going to really need to narrow that window width in order to visualize them. One combination with the window width is the window level. And we're gonna get into that now is how those two parameters affect our ability to visualize different structures within our images. For CT especially, a lot of times we're gonna to wanna to have many window level settings for one given acquisition. And we wanna understand what's driving those different window settings. Inside your computer, the matrix after the image is reconstructed and any post-processing has occurred, there's actually just numbers stored in a matrix, right? So those numbers, like we talked about in our other video for Hounsfield units, they're in a Hounsfield unit value. Typically it'll be a 512 or a 1024 size matrix. So the computer is gonna keep that matrix stored and then depending on the window width and the window level that you select, you're going to have a different image displayed to the actual monitor. So the image that's displayed to the monitor in our standard monitors, there's 256 shades of gray. So the values are gonna be mapped from household units to a scale that's from like one to 256. If you have a really expensive MAMO display, it might have significantly more. So from one to 1024. What you want to understand is that you are able to select what portion of the grayscale values are actually being shown. Here's a little Bitmoji of me. And the idea is that right now, that Bitmoji is being displayed over the range of all the values in the image. Highest value in the image corresponds to pure white in the image. And the lowest value in the image corresponds to pure black in the image. And then everywhere in between, you just have that linear scale going from pure white all the way down to pure black. And in the middle is what we call the window level. So this is the window, what we call the window width is the range of values here. So you have the range of values, which we call the window width, which determines from black to white. And then the window level determines where that window is actually positioned in the grayscale values. Because your eye is not great at differentiating more than 30 grayscale values, the idea is that we want to focus down on what grayscale values to show depending on the task. So especially for soft tissue tasks, we want to narrow that window width. So what would happen if we narrow that window width? If we do that here, if we show a narrow window width, but at this window level specified right here, you can see basically you're just seeing my eyes and everything below that is dark and is getting set to just a black value. See that this image here and this image here, they have roughly the same window level, but the window width is narrower. So you can see the contrast is actually higher in this image here than in this image here. 
but some of the values are getting saturated. So that's what happens when you narrow your window width, you actually get better visualization, better inherent contrast ability for your eye to see the differences better between the different grade levels, but you end up having values at the upper end all saturated or at the lower end all saturated. So there's a trade-off depending on what your task, sometimes you're going to want a wider win window width, and sometimes you're gonna want a narrower window width. You're also gonna to wanna to center it in the correct position so you can see, essentially, this is kind of like a too low of a window level. This is too high of a window level. And this is a pretty good window level for viewing this Bitmoji. What I care about really is not looking at Bitmoji of me, but looking at clinical images. The brain is actually the most often imaged organ on CT. And it's something that we really wanna focus on here because you wanna get your windows right. And there's actually multiple windows that you need depending on what you're looking at. About in our Hobbsville unit video, we want to be centered around 35 household units. And then in this case, if we're looking at just the brain, we want about a width of about 80 household units. So this means we're going to be centered about right in here. And then we want a width of about 80 household units such that we can differentiate well between the gray and the white matter. Then you'll notice here the blood, if, if we have a window width of 80 and a center of 40. That means our lowest value is zero and our highest value is 80. So we're gonna be looking at values between zero and 80. Anything outside of that is gonna be saturated. You can see in this scenario that blood is gonna be at the very upper range and therefore it's not gonna be imaged well because the blood will start to actually saturate. So you can tell that there's something there that's brighter, but it's gonna be saturated out and as well as bone will also be saturated out. So bone and blood potentially could be confused if you have a window of zero to 80. So you need a special window for imaging blood in the brain, especially if you think it's gonna be along the bone interface or right next to the calvarium, because you wouldn't want to confuse blood and bone because they're both being saturated out. So what do we need to do? We wanna make the window width wider if we wanna see that blood next to the brain. Then we also wanna make the level higher. It's called a subdural window if we're looking for blood right up next to the calvarium there. And the idea here is that there are some ranges and you can obviously adjust the values on the fly depending on the brightness of the bone. But the idea in general is to make the window width wider and the level higher in comparison with your standard brain image. He is performed for a stroke imaging. We're typically looking for early changes between the gray and the white matter. So the idea is that we want to be centered right around 35 and we want to have our width right around 35 as well. So it's a similar window to the brain except it's narrowed in. So it's going to be very sharp contrast and it's going to have a noisier appearance in comparison with a standard brain window width. Temporal bones, you're looking at the bony anatomy and you're gonna be looking at air sacs within that as well as both soft and hard bone. So we're gonna to need to have a significantly wider window width and the window level, we're going to want to be higher as well. We wanna have a value of around 400 for the window level because we're looking at the bony anatomy and it's much more attenuating compared with the soft tissue. So we want to raise our window level such that it matches that. And then again, the window width is quite wide such that we're covering all the way down from air pockets all the way up to the densest bone, which can go well above this scale here. Finally, if we're looking in the neck, we might be looking at more of just the soft tissue neck in that scenario, again, we want to have the level still be around 3540 and the width we'd want to widen out so that we can look at other soft tissues. We can look at fat. So we'll typically want to have a lower noise image there and we'll be looking at a width of around 400. This is more similar to what we're going to see in the body when we're looking at regular soft tissues in the body as well. Move on down the body. So we start up in the head and then we go to the chest. In the chest, we have a couple different window widths, which are important to think about. 
namely if we're looking at the lungs or if we're looking at the soft tissue in the mediastinum. So if we're looking at the lungs, we're gonna want to have a relatively wide coverage because we want to have values covering this whole range of lung tissue. And then we want to have the level be relatively lower because we wanna be focused on the lung tissue itself, which has a good fraction of air. And for the chest, we'd want a window level of around minus 600, and then a window width of around 1500, so fairly wide. And then mediastinum, we would want a window level of around 50, and a window width of around 350 to 400, similar to our soft tissue imaging that we talked about in the neck. As we walk on down from head, chest, we're talking about the abdomen next, right? Abdomen is the second most prevalent type of exam on CT scanners, and it's very frequent that you're gonna to wanna to be looking at a standard soft tissue window width, which the window level would be around 40 and the window width would be around 400. This is in general good for looking at soft tissues in the abdomen. And similar to in the brain, when we wanted to have a narrower width in order to focus down on some of the soft tissue structures, that can also be done with a liver specific window width so if you're looking at liver specific imaging, you may want to have a window width, which is around 150 compared with the window width of around 400 for the standard abdomen imaging. The point out is that the same material may look different depending on the window width. So if you're looking at the same material in different parts of the body, where you're typically using different window width and level settings, they may appear different. So if you're just starting out in the field and you look at an abdomen image that has bleeding and you look at a brain image that has bleeding, you might say, why does the blood look different? This is the same CT scanner. I thought this was supposed to be a really predictable result. But the idea is that actually in the brain, we're looking at a window width, which is centered around here from zero to 80, for instance. And then the blood is right at the upper end of that range. So if we're looking in that kind of window width, the blood is going to occur very bright. And then if we're looking in the abdomen, we're typically looking again, like we talked about at a much wider window width and potentially with a higher window level. In that scenario, the blood is gonna look more muted and it's not gonna be one of the brightest pixels in the end. I wanna talk about the spine. So if you're looking at images where you're targeting those images around the spine and you're looking either at the cervical or the lumbar spine, you'll often want to have a couple different window widths. One of them would be a soft tissue window width so that you can focus on the soft tissues in and around the spine. And then one would be, again, more of a bone window width focused on the vertebrae. So for your bone window, you're going to want the level to be higher and the window to be wider. So for instance, like a 400, window level and a 2000 window width. Your mileage may vary on these exact numbers. The exact numbers aren't what I'm trying to get across here, but I'm trying to get across a feeling for why you're setting the window widths and levels. It's not just because your professor or your head rad told you to do that. You want to visualize in your head what type of soft tissues or what type of bones are you trying to see and hence how you want to set those windows optimally and the ct number is highly dependent on the kvp as well these values that i've given here are for kind of the standard in the industry which are mostly based around 120 kvp imaging that has been the standard for some time but currently there is a trend towards lower kvp imaging and in that scenario we know that the bone is going to be more attenuating and is going to occur more brightly. And as well, the soft tissues, especially if you have iodine on board, you're going to need to adjust the window widths and levels that you use in your clinical imaging. In window width and level, we're talking about really how to set the values that we're using in order to display the images and where do those values come from. For that, we have to see our video on how to units. Check that one out next.